In this video, I'm going to teach you how to go from beginner to veteran in Rome research in 100 consecutive tips. Timestamps for all the tips. Let's go. First tip, keeping up with changes. Roam is a living tool with an incredibly fast iteration cycle. By the time you use these tips, things might have changed. There will be a blog link in the description with any changes to this video. Look at that after you watch. Next tip, sign up on roamresearch.com for 31 days you can try it out for free. You'll get three graphs which are separate roams you can play with that aren't connected to one another. Roam runs directly in your browser and you have to use Chrome. Next, set up your desktop app. There's a progressive web app which is just a basic dedicated Chrome window you can launch from your toolbar. This is a great way to avoid distractions while you work. Next, use your daily note. Rome's wonderful because the structure emerges organically from your interest. Follow along in your daily note as I go. Make some bullets. The bullet or the block is the primary unit in Rome. Just write a bullet, hit enter, and you've got a new bullet. Hit enter again, write more bullets, hit tab on one of your bullets, and you've got an indented bullet. Indentation is how you structure things in Rome. That way you can collapse and expand bullets. There's no reason you have to look at everything at once. Click on those bullets that have sub bullets or children bullets and you get to hide everything. Hide things, reduce your information, don't get overwhelmed. The hot key for this is command up or command down on the parent bullet. Don't like bullets? Use document view or look at numbered lists. Right click and view as to change bullets or even whole pages into document view by clicking on the title and doing this. P.S. This is why we call them blocks and not bullets. It's a little bit more accurate since they don't necessarily need to be bullets. Multiple lines on a single block. Hold shift enter on a block. Now you're on a new line without creating a new block. This is great for sub thoughts you still want to see even if you collapse the block and hide all the sub bullets. It's also the best way to subtly tag items which we'll talk about more later. Next, drag blocks around. If you realize you actually want to restructure your page or something's in the wrong spot, just pull your bullets to new areas. You can drag it around by clicking on that bullet and dragging and dropping. You can even drag bullets into being sub bullets or drag whole categories of bullets to new places. Quick bonus tip, if you're ever worried whether your Rome changes are syncing, go to the upper right corner and hover over this green dot. This will tell you that Rome is online when they last sync to the server, whether there are any changes being linked. Pretty neat. Making to-do lists. If you want to get things done in Rome, just click on a bullet, right click it, and then click make to-do or unmake to-do to go back. You should see a checkbox appear, or you can type this craziness out. To mark to-dos as done, just click on that checkbox or type command enter. This will transform to done. If you do command enter again, you'll return it to a plain block. Type command enter as many times as you want to cycle between these states. Use dates to organize your thoughts. Type forward slash today and then hit enter to tag today's date automatically. You can use the same trick to tag tomorrow's date forward slash tomorrow. If you tag something as today, it'll show up in your daily note. If you tag something as tomorrow, it'll show up in tomorrow's note. Use time stamping to track your day. Want to note when something happened during the day? Go in your daily note, type forward slash current time, hit enter, and you'll get an exact timestamp for your current time. I like to use this in my daily note to track and commit to whatever I'm working at any given moment. Zooming in and out on blocks or individual bullets. Focus on just one bullet and any of its children. Select that line, then type command and period. Then you'll just see that block. To zoom back, do command and comma. This essentially makes any bullet into a new page without having to create a full page. Other ways to zoom in and out of blocks, you can double click on the blocks bullet, you can right click and select focus on block, you can do control and the letter O on the keyboard when you've selected a block. And again, command plus comma to go back. If you want to go back and forward on pages in Rome really quickly, type command and then hit the left arrow on your keyboard to go back one page or command and the right arrow to jump forward again. You might have to hit escape to unselect any of your selected blocks first. Alternatively, you can just click back and forward on your browser window. If you want to return home to your daily note, click the daily notes in the upper left and you'll be back on today's daily note. Or if you're feeling cheeky, type control, shift, and D to pop back real quick. If you want to make a new page in Rome that isn't your daily note, just highlight any word that you've written in your daily note and type left bracket twice. You now have a new page. This is signified by double brackets. If that page existed already, this will just create a link to that page. How to think about pages. Bullets are basically thoughts. Sub bullets are like lines of thought to that thought. Pages are concept bundles. Thoughts converge to pages. Rome makes this process happen naturally. Find out every time you've ever thought about something. Look at the bottom of a page by clicking into that page link and then scrolling to the bottom. You'll find linked references or backlinks. These will tell you every single time that you've ever linked to this concept anywhere in your daily notes or in other pages. Anytime that you tag a page or concept, 
it's going to be tracked here automatically. Remember everything, every meeting, every coffee, add any work meetings, projects, calls, coffees you grab with people in your daily notes. Indent, add details, tag people, then link anything you mentioned on anyone present. This meeting is now linked for all eternity on those person's pages in their backlinks. To create backlinks quickly at any time, go to the bottom of your page, past the linked references, and click unlinked references. This shows every time the text is mentioned of that page title that isn't linked yet. And you can click link on any individual reference or link all to tag 100% of those references. This is a great way to find any time you've ever mentioned an idea. Sort through your backlinks. Go to filter this page in your linked references on the bottom of any page and click any term you'd like to filter the references by that new term plus the page's name. This will only show things that include both terms. If you shift clicked instead, you can hide references. This is really nice to find or hide to do's or done items. Sort content on the page itself. You can do the same kind of thing by filtering the page in the upper right corner. Filter this page. Click this to filter the page itself and you'll hide anything that you aren't specifying in your filter. See a graph of all your backlinks. If you go to the left toolbar, then click graph overview, you can see a cool visualization of every time any page has ever talked to or connected to one another. You can actually go to any page and see in the corner where this page links to. And it's a way to brag as you build out your Roam database. Track your favorite pages and ideas. Click on the star icon in the upper right corner of any page. This adds it to the left toolbar as a favorite page. This is kind of a bookmarks bar for pages you're really into right now. Tap the star again to remove a bookmark. If you want to change a page's name, just go to the page's title at the top of a page, type into it, and edit directly. This actually changes every time that that page has shown up everywhere inside of Room. Working in multiple pages at once. Right click on any page link on a page and click open in sidebar. Note you can do this with individual bullets too. This opens a sidebar window on the right. Make changes in the sidebar and those changes will be reflected everywhere even if you have that page open in your main window. To open the sidebar fast and avoid right clicking shenanigans, just hold the shift key and then click on any link or bullet. This will open it directly into the sidebar. If you want to expand, collapse, move, and close sidebar items, you can just move those by dragging them around like bullets inside the sidebar. Collapse them to hide them just like normal. Click the X to close up a sidebar item that you're tired of. You can use the search bar on the upper right corner of the screen to find any pages or bullets. If you want to get there faster, click Command and then U to open it immediately. Or you can make pages. Just start typing and if a page isn't found, you can click Enter and it will create that page for you and open it. Stop! Coffee break. If you're a first timer, take a breather. Roam is a freestyling app. You can add all these fancy elements later. Drink a cup of coffee, ponder what's happened, and here we go. Open items into sidebar from search bar. To open a page directly from the search bar, just select it using your keyboard up and down, then hold shift and click enter on your keyboard. It'll open it right into the sidebar. You can use the sidebar to move content around a page quickly. Open a page in your main window and sidebar, scroll around the main page or the sidebar page, and when you find something you want to move to a higher point in the page, just drag it there into the sidebar or the main page. This is like cutting and pasting it to a new spot, but a lot faster and great for if you're aggregating things. You can use the mouse to open or close the sidebars if you're feeling quaint, or you can use command and then backslash on your keyboard to toggle the left sidebar, your favorites bar, or hold shift and command backslash to toggle the right sidebar. Here's how you navigate quickly in Rome with your keyboard. Do up and down arrow keys to jump from line to line. Use command plus the left and right arrow keys to jump to the start or the end of the line. Command plus backspace to cut back a whole line. Alt plus the left and right arrow keys to jump back and forward just single words, and then hold shift while combining with any of those commands to quickly highlight text. To quickly move blocks around using just your keyboard, hold shift command and then up or down arrow key. This will move a block one spot up or down the page. This is similar to collapsing and expanding using just command up and down, except you're adding shift. Some ways to format text on page, you can highlight using command H on selected text. You can bold using command B, italicize command I, strike through command Y. And here's what that looks like if you want to just type it out manually. If you want to use headers on your page, select any block and then type alt command plus one. This will create a header one. Alt command two creates a header two. Alt command three for header three. And then alt command zero will remove the header. Other ways to do this are put a single dash plus an empty space at the beginning of the line for header one, two dashes for header two, three for header three, or go to the beginning of the line and hit backspace to remove the header formatting. To use quote boxes, 
boxes, just add a right pointing arrow caret as the first character of a block and then hit space and type whatever you want. If you want to create a line break, just type three dashes as the only object in the block and it'll turn it into a nice little line divider. If you want to add images or files to your page, do forward slash upload on your keyboard and hit enter. You can then select files or images you can upload into Rome. Just note that these images are only secured by the URL's complexity, so be careful if this is a secure file. If you want to do an external image, just type out exclamation point and then a single bracket and then put the URL in a couple of parentheses. This is what this looks like. Once you have an image on the page, to adjust the image's size, just grab the lower right corner of the image to scale the size down or back up to up to the image's original size. External links and aliases. To link externally, type command K or type this out and put the text and the URL here. This is also how you create an alias, which is a link to an existing page on Rome where you can kind of just change the text to anything you want so that it reads as you like. This can make your backlinks a little bit more readable without changing the page name. All right, before we do the more technical tips, we're going to get into a bunch of tips on how to start practically enjoying using Rome before we get into more tactical feedback. So here are some of those. Make new bullets and indent like a crazy person. There's no penalty for making new bullets and you can always collapse them to make a neater page. Treat bullets as almost like pages in their own right. Add as much content to them, collapse them, summarize them, pull them new places. This is really the best way to think in Rome. Additionally, make pages with reckless abandon. Link every person, book, tool, anything that you have. You don't even need to add info to the pages. Just be prolific. Dud pages just kind of fade away over time and they don't ruin any folders or hierarchy or anything like in a conventional note taking app. You can always delete, combine, remix, rename pages. Make a to read or to watch system. So make a page or a system of tags that are dedicated to just fun stuff you want to do in the future. So to visit, to hike, to watch, make a wish list, add anything that you want to buy or get from people later. Make a bookmarks page, a best tweets resource, a resonance calendar, and start collecting stuff. Make a to do or weekly review page. By default, the to do page just grabs all of your check boxes and to do items that you've made. You can take the next step and segment it into priorities or top to do must do's or create a weekly or daily review system. I tag things with today, upcoming, and later and use that to generally sort all of my to-do items and figure out how to prioritize. Create project pages. If you're working on something big, you can create a project page, tag it, and then add it to the sidebar. This will help you to filter and query for project-specific items later, which we'll talk about. Morning pages. I like to complete a daily contemplative exercise in Rome when I have time. Start doing this in your daily note and then over time, track what prompts work best. Later, you can templatize this and automatically pull in your prompts every single day. Create custom tags for things you want to remember, such as new items, business ideas, new learnings. This is a way to tag things to re-review on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis. Quick capture thoughts and then sort weekly. Any to-do, passing thought, note, write it down in a simple app like Simple Note or Drafts. Then once a week, dump that into an inbox page on Rome that you can review and sort later into to-do items or into their respective pages. Recurring reminders, scheduled items, due date tags. Use these visibility tags for upcoming dates. You can filter by those, query by them, or wait for them to pop up in your daily notes on the date that they're tagged for. I like setting recurring reminders to back up my computer, clean the bathroom, scheduled items such as subscription renewals, and then due dates for assignments and work projects that I've set. Quiz cards. You can use Rome bullets as Anki-like quiz cards by collapsing the bullets to hide the quiz answers and then revealing the answers as you go. Okay, now that we've done some of the more practical ways that you can use Rome, let's get back into some technical suggestions. Using the favorite spar, I recommend bookmarking anything that you're finding yourself using more than once if you drag items to the top of your list whenever you use it. Anything that falls to the bottom and stays there over time can naturally be unstarred. This is a great way to attention filter your bookmarks to make sure it's only fresh items. Here's one of the best ways to use Rome, linked references. By this point, you've hopefully started to find a lot of fun things to do in Rome. If not, I suggest you go back and play around a little bit more. But once you're ready, you can start embedding content from certain pages to other areas. Then if you alter that content, it'll be altered everywhere it appears, not just the original spot. Here's how you do this. Linked bullet references. Drag the bullet with your mouse, but this time hold the Alt or Option key and let it go in a new spot. Now you've got a linked reference to the original bullet. If you click through that reference, you'll open where it was originally. If you hold Shift while you are holding Option and dragging, you'll actually embed all of the sub bullets too as linked references. This is a great way to never have to rewrite an idea. You can just create a linked reference and it will pop up in a new spot. Reference bullets actually have unique unique reference codes. If you right click a bullet and click copy block reference and then paste that reference wherever you want, this is another way to link that. You can also search for a bullet if you want to link it by just double typing
typing parentheses and then start typing some words that you know are in that bullet. And once you find it, click enter and you'll grab it in. To take to-do bullets from your to-do page into your daily note or into a project page, open the destination page and open to-dos in the sidebar. Then hold alt and drag that to-do item from the daily note into the destination page. This way there's still only one to-do item instead of a bunch of duplicates you have to track, fully embedding linked references. If you take any linked reference, you can right click it and click replace with embed. This way, instead of just clicking through and editing the original reference, you can actually edit that reference right on the page right there as an embedded reference. It'll update everywhere. You can also use this to be able to collapse and expand the sub bullets in that reference. If you want, you can embed full pages, which will let you create dashboards of related pages on one page. Just do backslash embed and then hit enter. You'll get this little embed command. Delete the double parentheses area and put the page link there in double brackets. This will embed the entire page. If you want to use blocks as templates, all you have to do is type double brackets roam slash templates and double brackets and add that to a block. Then to pull that template, type double semicolon and then select the template that you want to populate. This will automatically paste that block and any sub bullets in that new spot. Indentation tagging 101. To filter well by combining tags, you need to indent properly. Always add backlinks to the top bullet and then indent under that bullet. This will get you better results when you start to use filters or queries for multiple tags. Queries will actually only find combinations of tags if they're in the same bullet or if they are nested under one another. If they are in sibling bullets like this, they actually won't be able to find each other. If you want to change how your backlinks are formatted, there's multiple ways to see them. There's the traditional double bracket, which we've already talked about, which displays like a link. You can use these for links you want to read as part of the line. If you add a hashtag to that double bracket, it will display faded links. Use shift plus enter to cleanly tag bullets. If you just use the hashtag and then start typing, that will also display a faded link. I don't really like this and think the other two methods are much better. Another way to format backlinks are attributes. Type a word or a phrase and then a double colon to create an attribute. Attributes are fancy backlinks that are hard to query since they don't really do the indentation that we talked about earlier very easily. I recommend not really using attributes until they become awesome in future updates, which we've been promised, but we'll see when it happens. Overcome metadata anxiety. I think metadata is kind of overrated in terms of its utility. It's just something people like to do and sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Really, I think your intuitions will guide you to the right amount of metadata long term. Don't overdo it. Also, don't worry about over formatting or making your pages fancy earlier on unless you're really into it. Prioritize getting comfortable zooming in on blocks, collapsing things, structuring the page in an intuitive way. Most formatting in Rome is kind of a form of premature optimization. If you want to capture tweets, create a system like this. In the top block, add a one line summary of the tweet and tag the user. Shift enter to create a second line where you can tag metadata of what the topic is or what that tweet's about. And then indent a sub bullet, put the URL there so that you can hide that tweet. And then if it's especially good, copy that text and then put that text as another sub bullet in case that tweet gets deleted later. Capturing book and article quotes. I recommend aggregating using the Readwise app. This will automatically pull from Kindle, Instapaper, and then export into Roam. You can then progressively summarize those notes by adding your own takes and your own information. Capturing screenshots quickly into Roam. On Mac, hold Command, Shift, and 4 to capture a selection of your screen. Once you have your selection, if you hold the Control key and click, you can add that to your clipboard, and then Control V to paste into Roam really quickly in seconds. If you want to import a bunch of links into Roam, use the One Tab app. Click Export or Import URLs on the One Tab homepage, and then copy the URLs you want to save and drop them into Roam. Practicing clean tagging. If you want to save tweets or other content, then nest that URL under a sub block and then collapse it so it's hidden by default. You can then add metadata tags to the second line using Shift Enter and then hashtag double brackets to make them subtle and pleasing little links. If you want to jump to a date on your daily notes, go to the daily notes page, then click the icon in the upper right. You can navigate to certain dates really fast this way. If you want to see a word count on any given block, type forward slash word count, then hit enter, and you'll get a word count on the bullet you're on. This counts all the words in the sub bullets of that bullet too. If you want to get the word count for a whole section, add the word count to the top level bullet and then use control O to focus on that block. Then you'll see the word count in the title of the block view. If you want to see a character count, type out curly brackets count, and it'll show you how many characters are in that block. I use this to draft tweets in Rome. If you want a little Pomodoro timer, which is a 25 minute timer for focus work, type forward slash Pomodoro and hit enter. Then unselect the block and click start to begin. If you want to adjust the amount in the time period, just delete the 25 that's the default and add your own. Big picture date tags. I like to tag items by the 
week or date ranges or even months. You have to create those manually. I create them by year, quarter, month, and even week. I'll talk about this more in a future video, but you can then use these to categorize and pull tags into queries. Speaking of which, what are queries? Queries are asking Rome questions about tags. There are four basic queries. To use the and query, type forward slash query and then and and hit enter. Or you can type this out. Then replace the example A and example B page tags with your actual page names. This will show you every combination of where both of those tags are applied. The or query is the same way except you type forward slash query or. This will show any bullet that has either of those tags applied to them or combines them in their subchildren. If you want to build on queries, you can combine and expand those queries. For example, you can add as many pages to an and query as you like to make it hyper narrow or you can combine queries by nesting them together such as this which searches for any combination of example a and then either example b or c the not query add that to an and or an or query to filter out certain terms like so usually you use this to filter out other queries templates done items and things that you don't really want to show up in your query results the between query filters by a date range you can only really use the between query on the daily notes page unless you embed that query from the daily notes to somewhere else and it also has to be the final thing in a query if you want it to work. For some bonus query tips, you can actually search and query by blocks and or pages or combinations of the two. I also recommend sneakily hiding your queries by creating header tags that describe them and then collapsing them when they aren't in use. Using text expanders, Google create text replacements plus the name of your OS or find an app like Alfred or text expander to quickly populate templates and tags. For example, I have a daily note format that I like to automatically populate and that's set to comma DN and it'll automatically pull that in. Searching for special items. If you're creative, you can figure out how to search for weird items. For example, if you create a page for exclamation point, open and close bracket, in the unlinked reference of that page, you'll find every image in your entire database. Or if you create a page for n.wikipedia.org, in the unlinked references, you'll see every time you've ever mentioned Wikipedia. If you think creatively, you can find a lot of things quickly this way. Some fun embed tricks, you can embed Spotify and YouTube. If you want to listen to or watch things in Rome and take notes as you do, just do squiggly bracket YouTube colon URL or Spotify colon URL. Code tags in Rome. If you want to type code on Rome or keep Rome code from actually displaying, use single quote tags around text. Then it will show up like this. You can use triple quotes to actually type in code that you can execute and run inside Rome natively. Back up Rome. Go to the upper right corner to the triple dots, click on it and click export all. I recommend setting a recurring reminder to back up your archive once a month so you don't lose your precious data. Save it to your PC in a cloud drive so it can be restored if the worst can happen. Proper page names. Page titles are actually capitalization and grammar sensitive, so it's got to be an exact match, otherwise you'll create multiple pages. Basically, you want to decide on how you're going to capitalize pages versus not and stick with it. For personal items, I recommend putting your name at the beginning, doing a forward slash, and then typing the page's name. This is called namespacing, and it will allow you to show that word as just family, even if it's mark-family. You can then click control C and L to cycle between the namespace view and the normal page name view. Using tables, you can actually make tables in Rome. Do forward slash table and click enter to create, then add sub bullets under the table text to add to the content. If you want to add new rows, just add a new bullet. If you have sub bullets, that will add columns. If you want to use Kanban boards, just do forward slash Kanban and hit enter to create. Then add sub bullets under the Kanban to add Kanban content. New bullets will add columns and new sub bullets will add cards to the columns. You can drag them around and you can see them move between the new columns. Dealing with text formatting conflicts. Combining formatting styles sometimes will break styling. If this happens, just highlight the problem, then add the primary formatting to it using the hotkey. So if bold is the primary formatting, just try to bold that selection. This should close out the formatting that's causing the issue. Slideshow mode. If you want to give quick presentations in Rome, just focus on a bullet using control O and then use control and then C and M at the same time to go forward to the next bullet. This is like moving forward in slides. It goes to the next sibling. Version control. If you want to add new versions to any bullet or any page that you're working on, just do control and comma to create a new version. Then click the version number to switch between them. To add more, hit that same hotkey again or click the plus sign. To delete versions, just backspace them away. For extra security and encryption, you can use the function encrypt, which you type out like this, or forward slash encrypt enter, and then you can manually encrypt individual blocks with passcodes. Inline calculator. 
here. You can use the calculator function, which will display like this to calculate math inline. And you can actually even embed blocks as references and it will still calculate if you reference each other. Sliders, and you can type this out or do forward slash slider and enter to create a little uh, rating slider. Finally, creating a personal Rome changes list. There's all kinds of things you can do in Rome. And as you think up new ways to have fun, don't try and fix everything at once. Let your graph evolve with you and create a Rome changes to make page. This will allow you to quickly track future to do items and improvements to make to Rome so that you can implement them when you've got a little extra time on your hands. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please give it a like. This actually took me so long to edit that I have gotten at least one new haircut and have actually moved departments. So I will probably never do a video this long again. If you're interested in a more philosophical introduction to Rome, you can watch this video. If you enjoyed this, I'm planning on making more Rome videos, breaking down all of these tips in more detail. Let me know which ones are the most interesting so that I can make that video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.